Hello students, welcome to Plus One Political Science class. Today I will start lesson three, the origin of the state. In this chapter, I will discuss three theories of the origin of the state. The objectives of today's class are the origin of the state, its meaning, theories of the origin of the state, divine origin theory of state. Statement of major religions regarding divine origin theory of state, features of divine origin theory, and critical evaluation of divine origin theory. Before discussion of these objectives, I will discuss the key terms with you. First term is accountable, means expected to justify actions. Anarchy, a state of disorder. Scriptures. The sacred writings of religion. Monarchy, a form of government with monarch at the head. Orthodox, following traditional rules of a religion or philosophy. Banished, sent away from a country. Now, I will discuss the topic of the day. That is the origin of the state. I will discuss its meaning. Students, today I will talk about several theories of the origin of the state. The word state is not a new term for you. You have already done the four elements of the state, its relation with the government, nation and nationality. State originated at a time when there was in existence no system of recording historical developments. Initially, people began to think of state as a divinely originated institution. However, after some time, several thinkers tried to explain its origin on the basis of factor of force. They faced their views on the basis of the fact that state used force for commanding obedience to its laws. In the 17th and 18th century, several thinkers like Hobbes, Locke and Rousseau came with the theory that state was a machine that came into being as a result of the social contact made by the people living the prehistoric state of nature. But now thinkers believe that state originated gradually as a result of historical evolution. Historical evolutionary theory came to be the most accepted theory of the origin of the state. So in this chapter, I will discuss the three theory of the origin of the state. The first theory is that divine origin theory, then social contact theory and historical evolutionary theory. First of all, I will discuss the divine origin theory of the state. The divine origin theory of state has been the oldest theory of the origin of the state. It advocates that the state is creation of God and the king rules the state by God's will. State is a divine and not a human institution. It is ruled by king on behalf of God. Commands of king have to be obeyed as dictates of God and disobedience to both is a, it's a crime and sin. Means if you disobey the king, it is a crime because king is ruling as a human and it's a sin because he is a representative of God. So it's a crime as well as a sin. The king is accountable to God for his rule. His laws are always just because these are made on the basis of his divine rights. Almost all the religions of the world accept the divine theory of the state. The religions of the world like Jews, Hindus, Greeks, Romans, Christians, 
Japanese and Chinese, they all believe in this divine theory of the state. Now I will discuss all this stepwise. First, I will talk about the Jews because Jews were the first to accept and advocate the divine origin theory. According to Old Testament, God appoints a king to throne and only God has the power to remove him. And even the king is responsible to God and not to the people. People has only one duty and that is to obey king's command. And even in Hindu scripture like Manu Samriti, it is given that king is God in human form. Even king is compared with God Vishnu. So this also supports the divine origin theory of state. In ancient time, Greeks and Romans also upheld the same theory. They believed that God rules the state indirectly through his agent and agent is king. So they also believe the same theory. Christian saints also advocated that original man used to live in heaven. He was banished from heaven for his sins and sent on the earth. Thereafter God created the kings. So they all are believing in the same, that is divine theory. Same way, Japanese believed that the king was the son of sun, sun means Surya. And even the Chinese held the same, that the king was above law. Above law means no law is above him. He is not answerable to any law. No rule could bind him. No institution could limit his powers because he receives his powers from God and is responsible only to God. According to divine theory, it is believed that kings are breathing images of God upon earth means king was God on earth. So divine origin theory of state remained as a popular theory during the ancient and medieval period of history. So I hope you are clear about the views of Jews, Hindus, Greeks and Romans, Christianity, Japanese and Chinese. Now I will talk about the features of divine origin theory. Friends, you must listen the features carefully. In exams also, the question comes on features of divine origin theory. The first feature is, the state is creation of God. And the second feature is, state is a divine institution. In both these features, the idea is the same. That is, God has created state and it is divine institution. Hope you are clear about these two features. The next feature is king is agent of God on this earth and the next feature is king has the divine light to issue commands and it's to be obeyed by all and the next is no one has power to take away the rights and powers of the king. So these are the five features which are very important regarding the divine origin theory. Now, even today, the states like UK, Belgium, Bhutan, Cambodia, Canada, Denmark, Spain, Japan, Malaysia are still monarchies, but they are not working like old monarchies. Now, the system is changed. We are living in modern age. There is impact of present situation also. So each monarchy work as a constitutional or limited monarchy. Recently change came in Nepal. You must be aware about this thing. Nepal has now abolished monarchy. Even Bhutan has now constitutional monarchy. Means monarchy is working there. But through the elected government. 
hope you are clear about the features of divine origin theory of state. No doubt this theory remained very popular in the ancient times, but in the contemporary times it stands rejected as invalid and many uh, changes are coming just now as I discussed the example of Nepal and Bhutan where constitutional monarchies have been set up. There are some shortcomings regarding this divine origin theory. The first shortcoming is that it is not based on the facts. There is no proof that first the king was appointed by God himself. So it is based on faith not on facts. Secondly it is based on mythology. Again as I told you that historical facts are missing. Now divine theory holds that king rules by divine right. It is responsible to God and the people have to obey him. Now students this point is totally against morality. King is not answerable to people rather people are to follow him. Maybe king is right or wrong but people are to follow him. He is not answerable to the people. He is answerable to God. This is not according to morality. It's against morality. So this is totally undemocratic as it is based on divine rights of king. This makes the king a dictator. It provides him all the powers by the name of God. It, it provides him unlimited powers. Is this point clear? So in this era of democracy, this theory does not hold ground in the present age. People elect their government and can even change him. So monarchy is an almost dead institution. If we find anywhere, it's only nominal monarchy. So constitutional monarchy and not a real monarchy. Because of all these shortcomings, the theory of divine rights stands rejected and unacceptable. Like I gave, I give you example of British Glorious Revolution. In this glorious revolution in 1688, the people rejected the powers of the king, and they established and they accepted the sovereignty of British Parliament. So, in the contemporary age of liberal democracy no one gives any real importance to the theory of divine origin of state and divine rights of monarchy monarchy lives as constitutional monarchy like in malaysia belgium denmark japan netherlands norway spain sweden etc so i hope you understand it's not divine theory working in these days in these countries. These countries have their constitution and that is supreme. So hope you are clear about the divine origin theory of the state. You will watch this video again and do your snap homework questions. So till then goodbye and thank you.